Hey guys, today is Friday and I'm in the truck about to head to Lake Bryan, Texas. It's just out of College Station and that's where the first exterior of the South Central region is going to be tomorrow. So I'm going to get there, check out the course, and I'm also going to jump in the water, try out my new rocket science wetsuit. And then we're going to talk a little bit more about wetsuits, about the tech side of them, the prices, and why you should race in one. We'll see you there. Well, we made it out to Lake Bryan for the Xterra. It's uh, going to be here tomorrow, and I'm about to go jump in that water. The weather is absolutely awesome today, um, and apparently the water is, is warming up quite nicely. It's in the mid-60s, so not going to be quite as terrible as the, the last race, so I'm looking forward to that. And I'm also looking forward to getting in my new wetsuit. I got my new wetsuit from, from Rocket Science, and tested it at home just tried it on fits good but I haven't gotten in the water with it yet so I'm gonna jump in here in a little bit and check it out so let's talk a little bit about wetsuit and wetsuit technology obviously there's multiple brands there's a lot of different price points uh, that you can look at ranging from you know $150 for, for a basic one all the way up to the tier freak of nature which I think is around it's about $1,200 for a wetsuit so there's a pretty crazy range there. And I, I kind of dug into this a little bit and looked at, at why that is. Why is there such a disparity between a base model and the top of the line? And a lot of it comes down to the different grade neoprene that they use. So there's three most popular grades that are used throughout a lot of different companies' wetsuit lines. It's made by Yamamoto and it's 38 39 and 40 is the different grades that they have and you can often see if you look in the description of the wetsuit what grade neoprene they're going to be using and that will often determine the price um, but the bigger factor is that it actually has a lot to do with the flexibility of the suit as well the 38 grade Yamamoto neoprene is a basic neoprene and it's often used in a lot of uh, wetsuits core and certain parts of the legs it has a lot of buoyancy in that particular grade but it does lack in flexibility and so there's pros and cons to using that type of wetsuit and that's typically found in the cheaper line and that's why you have people who often say that you know if they if they have fit in a wetsuit they've struggled because they felt like it, it limited their shoulder mobility or their arm mobility through their stroke and a lot of that could be a because of a poor fit but also could be because perhaps it was a cheaper level wetsuit and it was using a lower grade neoprene when you look into the mid price structure let's say around the like this suit here for example which is the real j and j from rocket science it's a 450 dollars wetsuit and it's using a lot of the grade 39 neoprene especially in key areas around your shoulder around the neck so that it's really nice and soft and also in certain parts of the knee so you still get that flexibility in your kick and then it'll use a slightly more dense and heavier neoprene on the chest to give you the buoyancy that you need from a wetsuit as well and so that all adds into the cost as well when you start looking at multiple different panels throughout the suit it's going to take a little bit more to construct that suit. There's going to be more seams that they need to glue and things like that. So there's definitely a lot more technology put into the higher end suits. And then when you look at the top end, uh, then they start using the very expensive Yamamoto grade 40 neoprene. Now that has the highest flex out of all the grades. And obviously that's why you find it in those very, very top end wetsuits. So I am a, a pretty firm believer in kind of that mid-price and almost everything that I purchase. And so for me, a $450 wetsuit um, using that grade 39 Yamamoto neoprene is, is really, that's, that's a great pick for me. I did find during my research that, that Rocket Science tends to have a slightly better price for the quality of neoprene than they're using than some of the other brands. For example, their top of the line wetsuit is $750 using the Yamamoto 40 neoprene versus obviously something like the Freak of Nature uh, from Tia, which is $1,200 also using the grade 40 neoprene. 
So if you found in the past that a full sleeve wetsuit has been too restrictive, could come down to like I said fit, or also the material. And if you do want to get into a, a new full sleeve wetsuit, go a little faster, then definitely look at the grade neoprene that it's made out of. Make sure that it's got the right panels in the right areas, and unfortunately, often that does mean spending just a little bit more money. So let's take a closer look at my Rocket Science Real J&J wetsuit. Like I said, this is a, a, their mid-level wetsuit. Um, $450 is the retail on this and I was actually pointed towards this suit by Stacy at Playtry. She said it's one of their more popular suits and also they just really like some of the features that it's got. On. It's got a great construction. Like I said, they tend to use a, a higher grade neoprene than a lot of other companies but at a much cheaper price point as well. So I really like that because I'm all about saving a few dollars when I can. So one of the cool things about this wetsuit is that it actually has a reverse zipper so you put it together at the top zip down and then the string has actually got a little magnet that just locks it up there pretty handy what I found when I was playing around with this at home is that it's actually much easier just to reach around that and zip it off rather than having to reach behind you switch hands pull it down much easier to get out of and a little quicker now in a swim like tomorrow, we have an 800 meter swim, so it's pretty short. Some people would say that it'll be quicker if you don't swim in a wetsuit because you have to take that time and transition to take it off. Obviously a wetsuit is faster than skin uh, in terms of drag through the water. But not only that is that the buoyancy of the wetsuit gives you a better position in the water. So you're going to swim faster and typically around five to seven seconds per hundred faster than not swimming in a wetsuit. So even though we're talking 800 meters, if we say seven seconds, 56 seconds over the course. In terms of taking it off, you should be able to get a wetsuit off in about, I don't know, probably about 10 seconds. Now putting a wetsuit on is definitely something you want to take your time with. These wetsuits are not really made to be indestructible. They're not like a surf wetsuit where they're made to be you know, rubbed against a board or anything like that. They're designed specifically for the purpose of swimming and swimming fast. So you want to make sure that you do take some care in putting it on. Take your time, make sure your fingernails are nice and short, and try not to, to really pull on it and putting any pressure with your fingers. So in saying that, I'm gonna throw this on and we're gonna jump in the water. There we go, nice and snug. Time how long this takes to take off. Ready, go. Just a few seconds. Okay, that's it. Wetsuit is tested out. Feels awesome. So much more flexible uh, than my last wetsuit. So pretty excited about that. Really looking forward to racing in it tomorrow. All right, I'm gonna go check out the bike course, get some food. Put my legs up. We'll see you tomorrow.